Just go got it. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day 11 or the last day of demonstrations of delicious, healthy, raw food that is low in fat by one of the contributors of the new, brand new Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. And this is one of the co-creators of the bundle. The other co-creator, Chris Kendall, has already been on the show. This is Lissa from Raw Food Romance. And she is going to be making, I'll give you a hint, something with kale. So I wrote a book on processed and she took so many of my recipes and not only made them raw, but made them low fat. So together we have a new book in the bundle called Make It Raw. And she is, is I mean, basically she just made everything better. And she, photog she the photography is like, you want to lick the page. And she's going to be making one of the recipes called Hail to the Kale. That was one of my most popular recipes. As a matter of fact, it was sold at the Whole Foods in Pasadena for many years in a grassroots restaurant in Pasadena. It's an amazing recipe but it's really, really high in fat. And she's found a way to keep the flavor without the fat. And if you're interested in this new book or in many other eBooks, courses, hundreds of recipes, all brand new content, this is a different bundle than all the other ones we've offered. You have about 12 hours left from right now to get it. And we'll let you know how to do that. But first, please welcome to the show, Lisa, the bundle babe is what we call you. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Chef AJ. You're so awesome. I'm so blessed to be here and to call you a friend. I seriously love you. I'm excited. And I love that uh, we were able to make this book together to make more raw available for people to enjoy because I mean, hey, why not, right? More raw food. Well, absolutely. And your photography, man. I mean, did you, is that, did you study it in college? I mean, you're really good. I'm sure you know. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, in 2008, I became a professional photographer. I didn't study it um, in school or anything, but I studied on my own a lot. And I have had a photography company since 2008 until about 2018. So I had it for a whole decade. It was called Raimondi Art and Photography. I did weddings and newborns and family photography, food photography. I did photographs for um, restaurants and cafes and all kinds of stuff. And I uh, personally, one of my absolute favorite forms of art is photography. So when I started eating a raw food diet, I was like, I can combine my love for raw food with my love for photography and take epic photos. And I get lots of fulfillment from taking the photos and the videos and everything. I really thoroughly enjoy it. So yeah, that's kind of a little background on me. Uh, I did that right up until Raw Food Romance was able to cover all my expenses. And then I went right into spending more time because I found that I was spending like hours and hours a day responding to DMs and helping people, which is what I want to do. That's my passion in life is to help people. So when I was able to drop the photography, I was still able to take the pictures of the food, make the eBooks and do all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really fun. I love it. Well, it's a gift, man. I mean, you're the, the, and you crush it on Instagram. You seem to, you know, you like Instagram. What do you like about it? Cause I don't know why I don't like it. I like YouTube. You like Instagram. Tell me why you like it so much. I, I like YouTube too, for sure. I'm just not as on point like you. I, I admire you for the YouTube. You admire me for the Instagram. I love YouTube, but I feel like Instagram, I don't know what it is. I feel maybe because it's photography oriented or was in the original days. Like now it's more video content. Now it's like really geared towards the uh, short form reels and stuff like that, which is fine. But in the early days, when I got on Instagram, it was a photography, mostly photography website, social media, right? So when I got on, I was like sharing the photos and, and it was just so much fun. And I sometimes feel like it's in a way a challenge for me to see how many times I can post. And I like to be really analytical and look at the numbers and see what works and what doesn't and work on that. So I find that to be fun. I'm really analytical with the with the statistics and stuff, but I like the connections that I've made on Instagram and I like the creativeness of it. Not that YouTube isn't, but just for the photography aspect and the connections that I've made over there. I mean, Nate found me on YouTube. He did find me on YouTube, but 
he followed me on Instagram and I have like a, a nice connection with Instagram because that's kind of where we started to have a relationship and we were like always in Instagram chatting. So I kind of have a, a nice little love for Instagram for that too. <laughs> Well, you do. And it's funny because um, we can tell this story now. You were a little bit late today. We mixed up the time and I, uh, you weren't answering your phone or your text. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to search Instagram because she's going to be live with somebody. And sure enough, I found you live. I put it in the chat and here you are. See, so if you know, if you can't find Lisa, I don't know if your mom's watching, just go on Instagram. She's going to be live with somebody. I love that so much. I love that. I know Chris, because I thought we were on it too. And it's just a miscommunication or whatever. But yeah, when you said that, I was like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's buy Chris. And I'm like, you're going to come on for Chef AJ. I'm so glad you looked at the comments because sometimes people just don't. And I'm like, please, please, please. But anyway, you're here now. That's the most important thing. And you're going to be making a delicious recipe. Now, as the co-creator of the bundle, you can really speak to the content probably even better than anyone else. Yeah, so the bundle, everybody, the bundle is only available for 12 more hours. Well, 12 and a half. <laughs> 12 and a half more hours. This bundle is completely unique and it's completely new. So people come to me and they message and they say, well, is this the same bundle as the last one? How is this different? This bundle is all completely brand new content. It's all brand new. So there's nothing in there that you already have. You're not going to get any duplicates of other people's products. Everything is new. There's 10 mini courses in this bundle. And the mini courses aren't really mini courses. They're like actual courses. But some of them, like my husband, Nate, he has his Sprouts, Sprouts, and Microgreens course in there. My course is called Checkmate Your Cravings. So if you're dealing with cravings, it talks a lot about tips and tricks and ideas. I mean, there's 30 videos in there. There's five guided meditation videos and there's over 200 downloadable pages just in my course alone. And my course is going to retail for $77 after the bundle. And Nate's course is going to retail for 77 as well, but he's going to actually raise the price because he's going to be adding a lot of content to his course. So if you want to get all that new content, Get the bundle now, because once you get into the course, you have access to all the new content, you know, whenever we post new stuff and I'm going to be posting new stuff as well. So even just those two courses alone are worth the price of the bundle, which is only $49, but there's recipe books. There's the one that I wrote with you. There's um, a sushi course. There's a healthy menopause course. There's. Oh my gosh. There's uh, a tart the raw chef yin. I wish I had, I have, I'm having her on next week because she was booked for just because, I mean, that tart book, that dessert, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Low fat desserts. That's something that's really lacking in the raw food world because it's really hard to make desserts low fat because the nuts, you know, they carry that's what we were saying before we logged down. I was like, I wish oats were raw because I, it, it, that's the thing. All the raw food desserts, not all of them, but most of them are based on nuts and dates and nuts are really high in fat or seeds, but you gotta have some buckwheat though. That can you, you can make that raw, right? Maybe for a crust. I'm wondering. Yeah. Cause you can sprout buckwheat and then once it's sprouted, you can dehydrate it and then grind it. So it's technically a raw sprouted product and you can buy sprouted buckwheat flour as well in the store. I've seen it in places, probably online or whatever. So that's a possibility too. I find like, you know, there's like some good ingredients that you can use to change textures like Irish moss is raw and that's a great one. Psyllium husk is a great one to use as well. And you can mix certain things together to make different textures and different flavors. So it's going to be really interesting to see her, but her book is in the bundle. So if anyone's looking for raw, low fat desserts, grab the bundle and check out Yin's book, Pies, Tarts and Pies. It's seriously awesome. She's got even like a, a savory kind of chicken pot pie style in there as well. Yeah. Her photography is really good too. Yeah. Yeah. She is on point <laughs> with her photography. I really admire her page as well. That's amazing. When you, when you, I don't like, I don't like this word, when you attack a recipe, when you approach a recipe, how do you, do you look first, first, like first I'm going to make it raw 
Uh, well, obviously it's got to be vegan, but I'm guessing you maybe get inspired by vegan recipes that are maybe not raw. Do you try to raw fry it first? Do you try to low fat it first? Do you try to get the salt out first? How, how do you approach, what's your process? That's a good question. I, I look at each ingredient individually and I see what would make it work more for a low fat raw diet, right? Like obviously things like kale and tomatoes and stuff that's we just pass over that because it's easy, but things like say yogurt, for example, right. You could use uh, fermented coconut yogurt instead, if that calls for that, or if there's, um, I don't know, like oil, for example, oil is a big one. When I first went raw, um, my ex really missed, cause I was making his meals too. He really missed vinaigrettes. He missed the, the vinegary, thin dressing kind of thing. So I was playing around in the kitchen one day and I made a dressing, which is the dressing that I probably eaten the most often out of my entire journey on raw. It's my French dressing. And it's, it's really super simple. It's five dates, two cloves of garlic, um, the juice of a lemon, a little apple cider vinegar and some smoked paprika, and maybe a little chipotle powder. Like it's really super simple, but I found that if you add a lot more water to that one, it thins it out, but the dates kind of emulsify the dressing. So you don't need to use oil and it's got a vinaigrette style flavor to it without having any fats at all in it. Like a person could add chia seeds if they wanted to add their omega threes, but that dressing has been a game changer as well. So I find dates are a really good I wouldn't say replacement for oil because you can't replace that texture, the slippery texture. Um, but dates work really well to emulsify in a way in the dressing. So most stuff I'll just replace with dates if it's going to, if I need a sweet, because you know how a salad dressing is, it's fat, oil, sugar, and salt with some spice, right? That's pretty much a dressing, maybe some sour in there. So without the oil, uh, we just combine the sweet and the oil in the form of a date or a fruit or something, and then maybe add like a tablespoon of chia seeds to give it that uh, extra, the fat edge. But really, I mean, yeah, I would say I, I look to see each individual ingredient, how I can use it and what other ingredients I can put in to change the flavor or to keep the flavor and to make it work low fat raw. That's kind of how I do it. It's, like, it's hard though. Sometimes I'll like when I get inspiration for writing a new ebook, I'll go on websites and I, I, I look at traditional, you know, standard North American fare and I look at it and I'm like, how can I make that raw? Obviously I can replace things like chicken, like shredded chicken. You can use shredded oyster mushroom instead. You just need to flavor it properly. So really it, it ends up being the spices and the flavors and making sure you hit all those angles, the sweet, the salt, or the grounding, like we use miso paste, or you could use celery, or even tomatoes bring a little bit of sodium to it. Um, the sour, the fat, just keeping it low fat, like even, we're still going to use a little bit of fat in here, but we're only using two tablespoons instead of uh, a larger amount. Just it, was a, it was a whole cup of almond butter in the original recipe. Yeah. Yeah. So instead I, I increased the dates and lowered the almond butter. So you still get the almond butter flavor. It's just like a lot lighter and it's got a different, it's got a different body to it in a way. Yeah. You know, did you, did you have Netflix? Did you watch bad vegan? I haven't watched that one yet. Well, the reason I brought it up is not, not about the actual documentary, but I remember when Raw got really popular because she, she, the subject of the documentary, she had a really famous restaurant in New York called Pure Food and Wine. And I think I might have eaten there and I definitely had her cookbook. It was so gourmet, but like when, when Raw is at restaurants, it's always based on high fat, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. And every time we go to a Raw place, it's like, in a way, it's sad because we make such big, beautiful, massive salads for dollars, right? Whereas if we go to a raw restaurant, and there is one here in Vegas that has a couple, it's a vegan place, so they're not all raw, but they have a couple vegan or raw vegan options on the menu, but it's very small. Like the tacos are like, there's three 
little tacos and it's like 18 bucks. And I'm like, I need like 12 tacos <laughs> to feel satiated. So for one, I mean, we, we eat before we go so that we just enjoy the ambiance and we enjoy the flavors, but it just feels not very substantial. And you do fill up faster because you're eating super high fat. So it, it feels like it filling, but in a way, like we don't feel as filled because we just want to have like a big, massive salad, lower fat. It just feels better in our bodies. And yeah, it's in a way sad. I wish there were some low fat raw restaurants out there, but we tried to have a catering business about two years ago. We had, uh, it was called La Bella Fresca and we had it for about a year where we were making raw, low fat raw salads and we were delivering them to our customers, but it was just like with time, less and less and less people were ordering. And it wasn't because they didn't want our raw food. They tell us, they'd be like, yeah, I'm going to order next week. And then they wouldn't, um, or they would be like, I'm going to tell all my friends about this, but then they don't. And it was just really difficult to keep it going, even though lots of people said it. Sad thing is when you have a restaurant or I've had a lot of people tell Nate and I, you guys should open a restaurant in Vegas. But, and they're like, I would totally come. I would totally come. But they're in Germany or the UK or in Canada or even in New York or wherever. It's like, but if we did build it, all the people who would come oh, don't live in Vegas. <laughs> so like, I feel like it would be pretty challenging to do something like that. And that's why I love writing the recipe books because everyone can make their own abundant salads in the comfort of their own home and keep it low fat. Yeah. What Karen says, what's the name of the restaurant in Vegas? The, the raw restaurant? It's called Veg Nation, but it's not raw. It's it's a vegan place, but they only have, well, they have one actually raw item. It's the raw tacos. It's like Pamela Anderson tacos or something. And then when we go, we've only been there twice since we've been here. It's been like eight months, but we've only gone twice just because it's pretty expensive for the amount of food that we want. And they have a salad that you can ask them to make raw. They just take the cooked part out of it, but the dressing's raw. Most of the salad's raw. So they just take out, I think it's, it might be grains or something or rice, and then you just replace it with more veggies. So there's one thing on the menu, but there used to be a restaurant here called Go Vegan Cafe, but they closed like a month before we moved here. So <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was raw and I was raw for about two years, uh, after going to the Optimum Health Institute, there was a food delivery company in Los Angeles. Now we're talking, I think 2003 now, and I believe it was called Seed Cuisine. And it was fantastic. I mean, the, the food would show up at my doorstep in the morning and I didn't need anybody to do breakfast for me because, you know, I could do a smoothie or fruit or just not even eat breakfast, but it was like so good. And it was <laughs> delicious. I, I'm sure, I don't know if it was high, high fat, but it was definitely, you know, not low fat, but I just remember how great it was just to have the food delivered. I know it's so nice to have your food made for you. It is challenging. I mean, any whole food, homemade diet is going to take time, whether you're raw or cooked vegan or whatever. If you're making food at home, you have to plan and prep. And it is nice to have people make food for you. That's for sure. <laughs> yep. So um, what do you going to do first, make the dressing or make the salad? So what we're going to do first for this is I have the kale and um, I'm just going to de-stem the kale and we're going to massage the kale first. And this recipe for everybody who's wondering, this recipe is in the book that Chef AJ and I wrote together, which is in the bundle. And it's called Hail to the Kale, but raw version, low fat version. So we're just going to de-stem these. I'm not a fan of the kale stems. You could save them and juice them or put them in dressings or whatever, but. Maybe we could send them for Ocean's Bunny. Oh yeah, that's true. If you have, um, that's something that we used to do. Um, Nate's ex has little pigs that she saved and she has them in her backyard. They're super cute. Um, Petunia and Lily, I think their names are. And we, when we wrote the burger book for the first raw bundle, we had so much um, extra food left over. But what we did was we had it all in a little bucket and I was just like saving all the scraps, all the extra 
you know, stuff from, cause I made 144 recipes for that book in like four days. It was insane. I can't believe I did that. But um, we had a lot of food left over and we took it to the little pigs and they had a great time eating that. And that's something that people can do too. If you don't have a compost in your house and you want to um, have a place to take your scraps, you can seek out an, an animal sanctuary in your neighborhood or close by save your scraps like you could put all your scraps in a bucket and you could if you have a big enough freezer this is great because you could freeze this stuff and then when you're ready to go out to the animal sanctuary just take the bucket out of the freezer with all your compost and take it down there because the animals the little the saved pigs and the chickens and all of them they love to eat all your scraps so it's a great way to do that if you don't have a way to compost your um produce I did not know that you do the kale by hand. I have this little tool. Have you seen it? It's a stripper. It's a kale stripper. Yes. Yes. I have seen that. I actually kind of want to get one of those because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do it that way. So, you know, I, I've been, I, I'm like, I'm like, it's just like honored that like you guys even want to be friends with me. Cause I feel like, I feel like sometimes I feel like guilty that I'm not raw. Like, I, I mean, not that I, I know it's going to be sound weird, but it's like, you know, I, I feel like I'm like kind of not in the in group cause all you guys welcome me and you know, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then you guys are like not judgmental about it or anything, but I'm curious cause is this just a representative population of everybody that's raw? Because like you, bring, or maybe because you and Chris are like really nice and like attracts like, but like everybody's been like so nice. And is it because it raw attracts nice people or being raw makes you nice because you all have beautiful skin and you, you know, y'all love your diet so much. And I keep thinking, well, you know, I want to feel like they feel and look like they look, but at the same point, I don't want to give up my sweet potatoes. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's funny that you say that. And we love you, Chef AJ. We love that you're part of the bundle and we love your energy. And we love what you're doing, sharing the truth about plants, right? Low fat, plant-based diet, vegan. It's, it's beautiful. And yeah, we're not judgmental because the whole goal I feel with the raw community that we have, everybody in the bundle is just to eat more raw. Like if you, you don't have to give up your sweet potatoes if you don't want to but maybe have your sweet potato with a big raw salad. Well, I do. I, I mean, lunch is almost always a big raw salad, except for like today, Charles is at the dentist, so he didn't chop it. But when, and then I'll have, I'll have steamed broccoli, but I do, I do do that actually. That's exactly what I do. But, you know, I don't think I eat, you know what, you know what I've been trying to do lately is um, I forget who was on the show. Oh, was, uh, you know, Misfit Vegan. She was, it made this beautiful tray with uh, the mini bell peppers. And I love the mini ones because like the big ones, you know, I mean, I guess you could eat a whole bell pepper, but the mini ones are so much more fun. You get all three colors in a bag. And ever since she did that, like I've been eating those as snacks. Like it's like, if I get, I don't usually get hungry between meals, but like, those are like, those are great snacks because I think at night, you know what I think it is, Lissa, is I'm kind of a hyper person. And I know, I remember when I was raw, it's like, I only needed like four hours of sleep and I felt like I was going to go crazy. And I feel like for me, and I, and I don't know if you like know a lot about Ayurveda and stuff, but for my dosha, it's like, I want to, I, I want to be like calmer, you know, and, and cook food just kind of seems to mellow me out more and raw food gets me a little bit more, you know, energetic. Yeah. And that's true. You do get a lot of energy from the raw, especially when you're eating low fat because your insulin is working really well, right? So you're getting that sugar right in your cells and you're going at it. Like, it's really great. Nate and I have tons of energy. We also do sleep, I would say anywhere between seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep at night. Um, we try to get a good quantity of sleep, but when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed early at night, it's easy to wake up at five o'clock and we're just like ready to go. We go for a walk and we, have a great time. So yeah, but like with the raw, you don't have to be all raw. You just do as much raw as you want. And that's what we're here to share with everybody. And while we're talking, I'm just going to take one tablespoon of my lime juice and I'm going to pour it over my uh, kale. And while we talk, I'm just going to massage this kale. You don't need oil to massage and you don't need salt to massage your kale. 
to have that bright color really the massaging act is just to break up the, the fiber and to expose the color so really you don't need any salt or oil because i know a lot of massaged kale salads have salt or oil added in order to break down the fiber but really just take it's more mechanical so let's get in here while we talk and i'm just going to massage this kale just crunching it and sometimes I like to grab a bunch and roll it in my hand like this. And I'm just gonna go crazy while we chat. <laughs> Yum. And uh, the kale, you know how that, that technique that you and Chris taught about freezing the vegetables and defrosting them? You, I know you've done it with cauliflower. Do you do it with any other vegetables or fruits? Good question. Good question. And in our ebook, the one that I wrote with you, we do use that technique quite often because in order to create a recipe to feel like it's more cooked in a way, we do use that technique to freeze. Now, the reason why we freeze the harder vegetables is because the water expands and it softens the fiber walls. So it's a lot easier to digest for some people and it the texture changes, which is super cool. So some of the vegetables that I like to freeze and then thaw in the dehydrator are things like cauliflower for one. That's like the top one that we freeze and thaw, but we do carrots. Carrots work really well like that. Celery works really well if you're doing raw soups and you've got carrot, celery, and onion, just freeze those. And then when you put them in your soup, it's got that softer texture instead. And I also like in our book, we've got a lot of sunchokes going on because sunchokes has been one of my absolute favorites uh, lately. And the sunchokes, those ones work really well frozen and then thawed because they have a very, very, very similar texture to a, a baked potato. So it's, it's a really nice addition um, to some of the recipes in your book because I took some that required potatoes or something similar and we just used sunchokes instead because you can use sun, raw sunchokes, frozen and thawed. Now, I, I don't, where, in the, where are sunchokes? I mean, I, I know they don't have them at Trader Joe's and I'm not even sure if I know what one looks like, but maybe Whole Foods or Sprouts would have it. Yeah, I have one right here because we're going to grate one. So they kind of look like a mix between a potato and ginger. That's kind of what they look like. And they have a very uh, neutral flavor. They don't totally have like a massive flavor, but they do have a little bit of an aftertaste I find. And so sunchokes are otherwise known as Jerusalem artichoke. So if people are having a hard time with, like if they go to their produce manager and they're like, hey, do you have any sunchokes? They might not, not know what you're talking about. So you could ask if they have Jerusalem artichoke and they might be able to find it that way. Um, but I have found ours actually here in Vegas, we have three different places that we can get sunchokes at. Actually four, I'll, I'll say four. The first time I ever had a sunchoke was uh, from a little farmer's market here downtown Vegas, we were hanging out with John Kohler <laughs> and John was like, uh, you guys gotta go to this little uh, farmer's market. So we went down to this market and they had some sun chokes and John was like, hey, have you ever had a, a sun choke? You gotta have a sun choke. So I bought some sun chokes and he said, they're 30% they're inulin, which is a prebiotic for your good bacteria. And I was like, okay never had one before and I ate it. We grated it in a salad and it was fine. Like we didn't really notice that it was in there or not anything. But then when I got my gut microbiome test, we had our tests done through Ombre Lab. And when we got the test back, one of my top foods to grow my specific gut microbiome was sunchokes. And they're like, this is the number one food for your gut. You got to eat sunchokes. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start eating sunchokes now. And we've been eating sunchokes pretty much every single day since December, since we got our tests back. And since then, we have found them at the International Marketplace. That's the best price here in Vegas. So if anyone's in Vegas, uh, you can get some chokes at International Marketplace. And then in Whole Foods and Sprouts, we found them as well, but also in the farmer's market. So you just, you kind of have to look around, but definitely from the, um, the international markets tend to have them. I found anyway. 
tell us about this test that you had. Uh, what is it? Where do you get it? How much is it? Yeah, so we got interested in um, the gut microbiome about maybe about a year or two ago when we read Dr. Will Bolsovic's book, The Fiber Fueled, right? And so we read that book and we got really into the gut microbiome. And in, I think it was November, yeah, it was November because it was a Black Friday sale. We saw that Mike the Vegan had a sale, uh, like a coupon code for Ombre Lab for the gut microbiome test. And I had been wanting to do one of these tests for a while. So I took the discount and I got Nate and I each a kit and we did the tests in December and the tests are really easy. You just take a sample of your stool and you mix it in this little vial with liquid and you ship it off to them. And then they test it and they can see how many strains of DNA from the microbiome that you have, what your microbiome looks like, what kind of foods are best to grow your microbiome because we all have a different microbiome. And they give you like an overall score. And our score, like the average score for the gut microbiome test from Ombre Lab specifically, the average person gets 62% as their wellness score. Um, our score was 83%. Nate and I were tied and we both had 83%. And I had a 95% for diversity, for gut di diversity. So I was like, I'm doing something pretty good here, right? Um, but after we got the test, we decided to change our diet slightly and include the foods that were listed as our top foods. So for me, those top foods were foods that I was not eating as a raw vegan. So there was fennel and fennel seeds and sunchokes, asparagus, Pears and apricots, I really wasn't eating a lot of pears and apricots, but those were some of my top fruits. So I have gradually added more of those. The sunchokes we do daily, asparagus, endive, chicory was another big one. So we've been eating a lot of endive almost every day. We use an endive in our salads and we don't, you don't need to add a lot, just enough to, to get things going. But yeah, we're going to do another test here in um, May, June to see how those those dietary improvements improved our microbiome and i think it was only like 100 or 150 bucks to get the test which was pretty good and they recommend doing it either like every four months or once a year or whatever just to keep up on it and like learn about your gut microbiome and it's we like to geek out on it so <laughs> well 95 for diversity i mean that's an a it is an A. It is an A. I'm, I'm quite impressed and I'm happy because, you know, when, when you go raw, you are taking out a lot of options, right? Like you're taking out the grains. We do, however, eat a lot of sprouted like lentils and mung beans and chickpeas and peas. Like we do use the legumes because we believe that the legumes are a very, very big part of a healthy long diet, like long lifestyle diet. So we do do that. And I think that contributes to the diversity score, but it was really interesting. Very interesting. Wait, so wait, you got to answer that about the legume, but first let me catch this question before it goes away from Melinda. Are these different recipes than what was included in the last bundle? And can you use some of the food leftovers in your gardening if you are container gardening? Oh yes, definitely. You can, um, you can use the leftovers for compost if you have a compost. Um, and you can do you can do stuff like that. Um, as for the recipes, these are completely different recipes from the last bundle. Absolutely everything in this bundle is brand new, never released. So we wanted to make sure that people didn't have anything that was in this bundle. Because, you know, when we get a bundle, sometimes people throw a book in that They've already been selling for a little while, but this bundle, everything is brand new. So all the recipes are new. We created everything brand new for you. And there's only 12 hours left to get the bundle. So you definitely want to hop on there and grab it to enjoy. And I've got uh, my kale all massaged, nice and bright. I've got purple kale and green kale in here. <laughs> I love purple kale. So you said you eat legumes, but you eat them probably the sprouts, right? Not you're not eating beans as a raw food person, right? Correct. Yeah. So so we believe that lentils are really important. And while I'm chatting, I'm just going to grate a little purple cabbage for our salad here. Um, I we do a lot. And that's another thing, too. If people want to learn how to sprout and grow microgreens, 
grab the bundle because my husband's mini course in there teaches you how to grow sprouts microgreens. So you can eat your lentils in sprouted form. And once they're sprouted, they have a lot more nutrition in some ways, and they're easier to digest for many people. So sprouting is a really great option. And like I said, we do, we sprout all different kinds of lentils. I personally really like the Luga lentils sprouted. Those are my favorites. Um, red lentils, green lentils, French lentils. Um, and then we do like speckled peas and mung beans. So we do try to keep a wide variety. We've even done azuki beans sprouted. And we do, so we, that we can have those legumes in our diet. Wow, that's cool. So there's a question from Deborah about grains. Can any whole grains be eaten raw or do raw foodies never consume whole grains? Mm. Yeah, um, you know, aside from the buckwheat, uh, you could sprout quinoa. Um, I'm not a huge fan of sprouted quinoa, but people could. And there's also rice that you can bloom. It's called blooming rice. It's a wild rice that you can get. Um, it's grown in Canada. And there's another, there's a couple of other areas that grow this rice, but it's basically a seed. So you can soak it and they bloom. They kind of like flower like this a little bit. And then that makes them raw. So some raw foodies actually do blooming rice and they add it to their salads or whatever. Um, so that's an option too, if you wanted to. But again, we're not about being 100% pure and perfect. So if somebody wanted to have a little bit of grains, like if you wanted to make this specific salad and add a cup of quinoa or some millet or whatever, I mean, go for it, right? At least you're eating a lot of good raw food. Yep. I agree. Yeah. So here we go. We've got our purple cabbage in our salad. And I'm going to next grate our sunchoke. So we've got one little sunchoke. And again, when you're adding sunchokes to your diet because it's so high in inulin, it can cause gas and bloating for people who have a weaker gut microbiome that isn't used to this. Right. Once you eat it more often, you're adding a little bit here and there. You can grow a stronger microbiome to digest sunchokes. So just start slow. We're just going to grate um, a small amount of this. And we're also going to grate some carrot as well to add to our. Do you ever use a, a turnip or rutabaga in your meals? Turnip or rutabaga? Um, I have used turnip a couple times, but rutabaga, I haven't yet. That's another food that I might want to explore. Because <laughs> when I when I went to raw culinary school, one of the things we did is like you take like a, you know the Joyce I think it's called Joyce Chen, but they have the spiralizers where you can make like angel hair and stuff. They used to make like uh, ravioli where it was very thin circle oh, yeah. of either rutabaga or uh, turnip, and then the filling would go inside and it would be dehydrated. Yeah, um, and actually jicama works pretty good for that too. You can use a, a mandolin slicer um, to slice it super, super thin and then maybe marinate it in lemon juice or freeze it. You could freeze it. If you froze it, then it would get really soft and like easier to fold. My cat just knocked something over. <laughs> it seems like all the raw fooders have more cats than dogs. I wonder if there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that is. I am absolutely, I love my cats so much. I don't, I don't know if I could ever like not have a cat. <laughs> well, Ocean had bunnies though, so. Oh yeah, Ocean's bunnies are super cute. Well, his, his pet is actually a raw vegan. Yes, that's true, because they eat the raw food. So I'm only going to chop half of this carrot for now, but here we go. We're going to add our carrots to this and our sunchokes into our salad. And the last salad ingredient that we have is apple. We're gonna julienne half the apple and add that to our salad. You could do the whole apple if you wanted to as well. That's so cool. You, so oh. you like to do things by hand, huh? You don't use like any machines to do the grading or? Um, you know, I, we do, like we have our food processor. Um, we have, we actually have an electric spiralizer that you just plug in and it spiralizes like so fast for you. 
But in a way, I actually kind of really like the, um, the meditative practice of chopping. And I'm not like the best chopper in the world. I really need to get good with my knife skills for sure. But I do like the just putting on some nice music and being in the kitchen and just enjoying chopping. So yeah, I do like my hand, but there are some things that I, I do have tools for, for sure. Food processor is amazing. <laughs> which, food, which food processor do you use? We have the, this one right here. This is the Cuisinart and I believe it's the 20 cup one. 20 cup is big. Yeah, it's massive. It, it's a big one for sure. I used to have a little guy that was like a, a two cup when I was living on my own. Um, this one here is Nate's. He brought it to the marriage. <laughs> wow. Here, here's a nice comment from uh, Melinda. I'm sold. The last bundle was great, so I know this one will be just as great. Well, if the, yeah, we, they have to be great or people aren't going to get them. And uh, when you think about that, any individual product or almost any individual product would cost as much as the bundle, even if you don't resonate with everything, you should at least click the link and check it out and see if there's stuff that you, you do like. So here's a question. And I, and I think the sentiment is what other people think. And I'm going to let you address this. Anne says eating raw sounds complicated and time consuming first to actually learn all of the new things you need to eat and then how to prepare it. And I think anybody even coming to veganism might say that at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely a top concern for people. And like, I know, like we're having a conversation and it's going to take me an hour and a half to make this salad. <laughs> but if I was actually focused on the salad, making it, it would take me less than 15 minutes. Really easy to do. Um, but it's all our distractions and stuff. And honestly, with anything in life, any new skill is going to take time and effort to learn just like a, a new language, right? We don't expect to be dropped into the middle of a foreign country and expect to be able to have a full conversation with a rocket scientist right off the bat, like after being only one week trying to learn the new language, right? So it, there is something to be said about taking your time and you don't have to jump right into a raw diet. That's the beauty of, of getting one of these raw bundles is that you have, like there's so much content that you could just dive into one thing every week for a whole year. Like actually there's 36 items in the bundle. So you could dive into a new thing every week or two on a Sunday, you could open up the, the, the downloads that you download and just enjoy one thing at a time. And I feel like when you feel overwhelmed, that just means you're stepping out of your comfort zone and it's a good thing. It's a good thing to feel overwhelmed because now you're learning. You're learning a new skill, you're learning something different, and it can be intimidating when you first start, start out because you don't know anything. So start with one meal, maybe make this salad, make this salad and enjoy it. You don't have to be 100% raw overnight. You don't ever have to be 100% raw, but you can enjoy more raw foods and you can give more raw foods to your microbiome just by enjoying some fun new recipes and learn as you go because no one is perfect. And I mean, I'm still learning stuff and I've been doing this for eight years, almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. Okay. Tammy says, I don't think I have enough room for on my iPad for all those downloads. Well, you have an answer for that. It's called a flash drive, right? Yes. Yes. You can get a USB stick or an external drive. You can also download onto your device and then put them in Google Drive or Dropbox or even iCloud, and you can put them on an, uh, like an internet storage service, which is what we highly recommend you do anyways, because devices die. Your computer dies, you drop your phone in the lake, or you lose your files. And if you don't want to lose your files, and this goes for all your precious photographs, your tax forms, all of those that information that you do not want to lose, Get it off your device and put it somewhere safe, like Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, or external USB. But this bundle, I believe, is just under 400 megabytes worth of content. So it's not a lot of space, and you can easily download, download that onto a little, even the little tiny old school 
um, sticks that are like two gigs or whatever. So you definitely should be okay. Um, they're not that much space. And we did compress all the files. So they are smaller. They don't take up as much space, but they still are high quality. Wow, thank you. Yes. So here we go. Look at the salad. We've got our salad here and we can move on now, to build the dressing. Yay, the dressing is what makes any salad. Your French dressing is delicious. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you know, speaking of that, um, there was a girl who messaged me whose son, she said his, her son was 14 and they had to do like a culinary presentation at school. And he made my French dressing at school for the class and everybody loved it. The teacher was like, this is amazing. So that was pretty cool. I love that people are enjoying the recipes and they're sharing them with their friends and everyone's eating more raw food. It's good. <laughs> That's great. Hey, you know what I heard from uh, John Kohler, who was on the show? I don't know why he's never in a bundle. He's amazing. But anyway, he told me, and, I, and this is true because I contacted Doug, Champion Juicer is going out of business. What? Interesting. I mean, what else can we, I mean, what do you make the banana and ice cream? Because of all the machines I've ever seen or tried or owned, it was unparalleled for its creaminess. Mm, yeah, we actually use our Vitamix. This is our old school jug that we use. Um, and Nate find, Nate really likes making it in the Vitamix. But don't um, you have to add some liquid when you're doing it in the Vitamix? Yeah, that's the thing. When you're making it in the Vitamix, we add about a quarter cup of liquid. But in a way, it enhances the flavor of the ice cream, depending on what kind of ice cream. If you're just doing bananas, then that's, you know, you can use the juicer or whatever. But if you want to add flavors... We like to do, uh, one of my favorite ice creams is a quarter cup of lime or lemon juice in the bottom with like a little bit of maple syrup and then the bananas, blueberries and lemon zest. And it is so good to have that extra lemon as while well, it's blended with the bananas. But again, it's, a, it's more like soft serve. It's like extra soft serve ice cream. So <laughs> is, yeah. is maple syrup raw? No, maple syrup is not raw. There are some things that we have in our diet that aren't actually like legit raw. So maple syrup is actually a sap, a, like this is the sap from a maple tree that's been heated into a syrup. And other things that we still consume that aren't considered raw would be like, maybe we put a little bit of nutritional yeast on something here or there. Um, coconut aminos aren't raw. They used to be. When coconut aminos first were on yeah, the they market, used to call them raw coconut aminos. What happened? So I used to work at a health food store and we, when we heard about the coconut aminos being a replacement for uh, Bragg's or whatever, cause they were lower sodium. We were like, oh yeah. And then plus it was raw. We're like, what? Because coconut aminos is actually fermented coconut tree sap. So it's actually a living food, kind of like miso or sauerkraut. It's a fermented product. The problem was once we started ordering it, we would order cases of it and it would come to us and out of a box of 12, there would be like four or five where the seal was busted and there was like coke, like sticky coconut aminos everywhere. It was all over the place. So then we'd have to call the company and get a credit on it. And it was a frustrating product to order because it was basically what was happening was it was fermenting in the jar during shipping, after bottling and stuff like that. So it would continue to ferment to the point where it would blow the lid and it would just leak everywhere all over the place. So the companies actually started heating the product after the fermentation process to stop the fermentation, to prevent it from exploding in the bottles. And then we never had a problem with, with it because it just wasn't fermenting anymore. So it was a raw product, but not anymore. We still use it every once in a while. We prefer miso. Um, though miso is a, a much better alternative, uh, to the coconut aminos, but then you don't get that, like the soy sauce flavor. So it really depends on what recipe you're making. Um, but we default to miso whenever we can. You know, I found a brand uh, of coconut aminos that's even lower than the, the, that's like, was like 25. I've got to see if I can find that again. It was on Amazon, but is miso raw? Miso is from, and it, do you use, what kind of miso do you use? Brown rice, soy, bean miso? There's so many different kinds. There are so many different kinds of miso. For number one, 
we check to make sure, I don't know what the name of the flake is. I forget right off the top of my head. It's like bonita flakes or something. That's not a vegan uh, ingredient. So we check to make sure that those are not part of the miso for one. Um, for two, we aim to look for organic miso because we want the organic soybeans. But if not, we don't, we don't like get crazy if it's not organic and it's the only miso there we'll get it as long as it's vegan we're more concerned about it being vegan so we'll get any kind of miso and the thing with miso is that even though that the soy or whatever is cooked first it's however fermented after so it's considered a living food not necessarily a raw food but it falls under the raw you know, bracket because it's a living food. So it's like fermented sauerkraut or homemade pickles or fermented carrots, that kind of thing. It would fall under that bracket as a fermented living food. And it's actually the sodium in miso doesn't act the same way on the cardi cardiovascular system as regular sodium does. So that's a bonus and that's why we do it. But there is chickpea miso for those of you who don't want to do soy. Miso Master has a great chickpea miso that I don't even really notice the difference in taste. It's pretty good. So yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. So let's, let's start this um, dressing. We're going to use half a cup of coconut water. You could use regular water if you can't get coconut water. It just adds a little bit of extra flavor to it. We're also going to use one tablespoon of miso paste in here. Ooh. Love it. Mm, delicious. We're going to use two tablespoons of lime juice. And I actually like it a little bit stronger on the lime. So I'm going to add three tablespoons to it. <laughs> two tablespoons of almond butter. Have you ever used the powdered almond butter? I'm guessing that's probably not raw. I haven't actually. I'm, I do know some raw vegans who, who use like even the powdered peanut butter because there's no fat in it. It's just the, it's kind of like more like a flavor, I guess. <laughs> um, but I've never tried um, the powdered one. I'm not sure how they process it. So well, there's a question up from, let me see who it's from. How about raw honey from Adele? It's not going to be vegan for sure. Yeah. So as, as an ethical vegan, um, I know there's some vegans who do still do honey, but I personally don't do any honey. So that's not part of my diet. I don't, um, I don't want it. I like no propolis, no honey, no beeswax, none of that. Um, but we do either date syrup. Date syrup is really great. And we got some really delicious date syrup from uh, the China Ranch Date Farm in California. We went with John Kohler and we got to like taste all the dates. It was really fun. Or maple syrup. Like I'd rather have a cooked maple syrup than to do the honey, but that's just my personal choice. I don't do the honey. But we're also going to add four dates to this delicious dressing. So we're gonna add those four pitted, make sure they're pitted because you don't wanna have a pit in your blender. It's gonna wreck your blades. <laughs> We've got half, I believe it's half a teaspoon of lime zest. So my husband so graciously zested a lime while we were getting ready for this live. So there's the lime zest. We've got some red pepper flakes. You can use a quarter teaspoon if you like it spicy or just do an eighth of a teaspoon if you don't want it super spicy, but we're gonna go super spicy here today. And finally, last but not least, we've got garlic and ginger. So we've got two cloves of garlic and a big chunk of ginger that we're gonna add to this. And so this is kind of what it looks like at the bottom of the blender. Um, I'm not going to use the vacuum today simply because it's probably going to take a minute and it's pretty loud <laughs> when it vacuums out. So I'm not going to use that, but I am going to add about a cup, a cup of water or so. And you can, you can guess how much, always start slow with the amount of water that you put in there. I actually might only do half a cup and see what that looks like because we don't want it too liquidy. We kind of want to have a nice thick dressing here. So I'm just going to blend this right now. Oh, 
I think that's just great. Mmm, and it smells amazing. We got our nice creamy dressing right there. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. And then the best part, this is absolutely my favorite part of all, is pouring the dressing on. So you know what? I'm actually going to come around and do it closer to the camera. Because we like to see that. <laughs> this is the best part. This is the best part. We're going to pour that dressing on. Look at that deliciousness. Ooh. Oh my God, it's delicious. Yes, beautiful and creamy. So there we go. Now also, we do have in the recipe red onion. So I'm going to grab one of these little red onions. We have them over here. I'm just going to grab one. Woo, here we go. And I'm going to chop that. And we're going to add it to the top. So there's a question um, on the number of downloads where I just saw it. It was, where did it go? Up from Ronnie. How long do you have to download the bundle? And how many times can you download it to different devices? That's a great question. So you have one year from the date of purchase. So we pay to host the books and we pay per download. So there is a download limit. Um, you have, I think there's like seven or 10 downloads per item. So you could download on your phone and download it on your laptop if you wanted to. But I just recommend downloading it onto your laptop. And once it's downloaded, Put it in Google Drive because then you can access it from your phone, from your tablet, from wherever, right? Because as long as you can log into your Google Drive, you can get it on, on multiple devices. So then you're just downloading it once onto your computer and then put it into Google Drive or on, onto a USB stick because then your USB stick, you can put it on a different computer or whatever, or you can email it to yourself and then you can open it on your laptop or, or whatever. But you have one year to download all of the content. And once you download the PDF, you have that PDF for as long as you keep the PDF. So as long as you don't delete it, you've got that forever. But the download link itself expires after one year, simply because we can't pay to have them up there for eternity. So make sure that you download it because once it's on your device, you can open it unlimited amounts of times forever, whenever you want to open it. So yeah, one year, one year after purchase. Yeah, but the people should do it right away. I mean, don't wait a year. For sure, yeah. And you know what's really interesting? Um, I Because we did the, the raw bundle last April, I have had a, a large amount of people message and say they still haven't downloaded the bundle from last year. So they're like rushing to get their stuff downloaded. So if you buy the bundle, please just take take 15, 20 minutes and download. There's only 36 items, so it's not gonna take a long time to download everything. Just download it all, put it in a safe place, and, and then just enjoy the content. You don't have to worry about the expiry date. <laughs> uh, Lisa Magba says, what can you substitute for almond butter if you have a peanut tree allergy? I'd say tahini, personally. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Great minds, think alike. Tahini so. would be an amazing alternative, a very delicious one. So tahini is good. You could also use, um, I like sunflower seeds. They're pretty neutral. Um, sunflower seed butter tastes a lot more like peanut butter, actually. Yeah. So sunflower is a great alternative because it's a seed um, and that works pretty well. But yeah, tahini, sunflower, we've done other things with like hemp. Hemp is pretty good, but it does have a, a hempy flavor to it. So hemp is a nice alternative. It works really well in Caesars. Um, they probably wouldn't work as great in this recipe because we're trying to get that, that nutty flavor. So sunflower would probably be your best option in this one. Great, thanks. Let's sprinkle on this red onion. Woo! I like a lot of red onions, so. <laughs> I love, and I love green onion too. Oh yeah, green onions, so delicious. So there we go. The hail to the kale salad. All right. By Melissa and Chef AJ. Hi, so you are 
Amazing. I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it from Andrea. I recently read, maybe Nate knows because he wrote a book about sprouting. I recently read eating sprouts is not recommended for seniors because they have lower immunity and sprouts can carry bacteria that can cause serious problems. I love my sprouts. Is this a real issue? That's a great question that we get quite often because I feel like people in on the internet will just say things or companies will protect themselves by saying this. The thing is, is that if you are using sprouting seeds that are specific for sprouting, like you can get them from Perfect Foods Inc. or Mum's Sprouting Seeds or True Leaf, they're tested for pathogens. So they're safe to sprout. And that's what these companies do. That's why buying sprouting seeds is way better than buying the bulk seeds because the bulk seeds you're going to cook and the heat is going to kill any bacteria that's maybe around in them. But when you sprout them, that's when the bacteria can start to grow if you buy the bulk. But the sprouting seeds are actually tested to make sure that there's no bacteria in there, any pathogenic bacteria that's going to harm you. So go with the, the actual sprouting seeds, but also remember that there's cross-contamination that happens even with those sprouting seeds. So if you have a household that still uses animal products, that can cross-contaminate over to your sprouting, your microgreens, that kind of thing. So you really want to be careful if there's still animal products in the household to keep them very far away from your sprouts and your microgreens just because cross-contamination happens on that level instead of actually the seed itself. So Nate and I don't worry about that at all. We haven't had an issue at all with our sprouting, but we also have a vegan home. So there's no animal products in here. And most of the pathogenic bacteria that are in the sprouts that you get scared of, like, you know, when they're like, oh, we pulled the alfalfa because there was E. coli. But E. coli comes from animals. That's in the feces. And it might be in the water that they use to grow the sprouts. And that's why um, things like, romaine lettuce gets recalled because when they're when they're watering the lettuce they're watering it with maybe water that's been contaminated from a farm beside them that has animal feces so it's that's kind of where it's coming from salmonella or e coli are the typical two pathogenic bacteria that end up in sprouts but if you sprout them yourself and you're using sprouting seeds in a vegan home i don't think that there's any issue there thank you and there's a very nice comment from, let's see, I just saw it. Yeah, from Cheryl, just purchased the bundle. Such cool resources. Thank you so much. Very, very worth the price. It has to be worth the price because if you took everything separately, it'd be worth like $2,300. And so, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Anne says, what about buying things already sprouted at the grocery store? Yeah, buying things already sprouted at the grocery store is a great option if you don't want to grow them yourself you can do that for sure but again remember that you don't know how what situation those were grown in so if you want to make sure that you're going to have a good batch make it yourself but most sprouts like Nate and I both brought sprouts and microgreens from uh local farmers from whole foods from wherever like we we've had a bunch of different kinds of sprouts and as long as it doesn't look like there's obvious mold growing in there, then I would say go for it. It's a great option. Great. And, you know, Magda says, I've never been able to find tahini without a nut warning. So I'll try sunflower seeds. I just make my own tahini in a nutra milk and it's really cheap doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Because tahini is essentially ground sesame seeds. Yeah. Really easy to make. Yeah. So you could just replace with sesame seeds too, if you wanted to. I've done that often as well. Like when we run out of tahini, we'll just put sesame seeds in the blender and blend it because it ends up being buttery anyways. <laughs> nice. Well, that this was amazing. So you, uh, how many more hundreds of lives are you doing today? Because you've got now, we've got like less than 12 hours left for the bundle. And somebody's saying they they if they needed help with the last bundle. It's the same email uh, that, that there was one in November. Was that when your bundle was? I thought it was October. Yeah, it was, uh, it was the end of October. It ended on November 1st was the last day for that bundle. 
And it is the same email. So if you need help downloading it, you can send an email to blessings at ultimateraweganbundle.com or you can send me a message personally on Instagram at raw food romance with your order number and your email and we can like dive into what's going on what what and please explain like what what issues you're having so that we can diagnose and and help you get all the, that delicious content wow well listen this was a wonderful presentation thank you so much and thanks for having me on i absolutely love being on your channel and absolutely love you but you know that oh my god <laughs> you're yeah you're just like this you're really like so sweet is that because you eat so much fruit i don't know <laughs> all the dates it's from all the dates right all the dates and the mangoes we've got i don't know if you can see all the mangoes back here mm. what's we your are. what's your favorite and like what is your favorite fruit and your favorite vegetable you know, for fruit, I would have to say for availability, mangoes would definitely be my favorite. But if I can get a ripe nectarine that is perfect, that's my absolute favorite. I could eat nectarines forever. I love them so much, but they have to be ripe and ready. They can't be like, you know, sometimes they're like, eh, it was a go okay one or whatever. But if it's a good nectarine, that's my absolute favorite fruit ever, followed by mangoes. I also really enjoy um, passion fruit and pears. I really like pears. I've been adding them to my diet. Um, they were kind of, you know, they're like pears. It's not really something that um, is fancy or exotic or anything like that, but I really love pears. So I've been really getting into that for vegetables man, it depends on the dressing. <laughs> it depends on the dressing. Cause I'm looking at this kale salad and I'm like, kale's my favorite right now. Kale is my favorite right now, but for health purposes lately, my absolute favorite vegetable has been the sun chokes. I feel like the sun chokes have now I'm going to go try them because in one of your pictures, it looked they look like potatoes. So I'll just pretend they're potatoes. Yep. Just pretend they're potatoes. And <laughs> yeah, it's, those are really fun recipes, especially I really like adding them to curries and chilies and those kinds of things where there's like a lot of other ingredients in. So it feels like it's like a chunk of potato that you randomly get a bite of. I really like the sun chokes made that way. That's my, probably my favorite. Oh, Karen says, you two ladies have so inspired me and my healthy lifestyle. Thank you so much. You're my heroes. We're your sheroes. Sheroes. <laughs> Love it. That is amazing. And uh, thank you so much. This has been great. And uh, I guess I'll see you on Instagram because you're always there. I'm always on Instagram. Yes, guys, go follow me on Instagram, Rockwood Romance. So that's like AJ said, that's the best way to get a hold of me. If you have a question, if you downloaded the bundle and you need help or whatever send me a message over there because that's where i live basically <laughs> yep. i live on instagram <laughs> you know when sometimes i get up to the restroom in the middle of the night next time i'm gonna just go on and see if you're live in the middle of the night <laughs> in the middle of the night right oh my <laughs> probably are anyway thank you so much and thanks for doing such a great job putting these wonderful bundle experiences together thanks it's my pleasure we got to get the plants to the people I love that. Plants to the people. We need a shirt like that. Plants to the people, baby. That's a movement. Yeah, Plants to the people. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's the next the, the next title for our book, too. I got it. Yeah, we do. We're, I'm on it. Well, thanks. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. You now have about 11 and a half hours to get this outstanding bundle. But do please come back at 1 p.m. in about 30 minutes when my guest is Dr. Kim Williams. And he's going to be talking about whether or not we have the guts to go vegan, the guts. He's going to be talking about nutrition and the microbiome, which is one of your favorite topics, Lissa. I'm like, I don't have any lives. I might hop in and watch that one. <laughs> you got you got a 95 on your chest. So I did, yes. Overachiever. All right. Well, take care. And I hope to see you soon. And I hope to see you guys in a half an hour and buy the bundle. Take care.